does one change the world while convincing giant corporations that they'll actually get returns on those socially responsible investments as well? Well, one man's vision has been turning that into a reality, identifying new markets for big business to get into and in turn make lives better. Joining us now is a man who has been recognized as one of America's best leaders as a social engineer, Bill Drayton, founder and CEO of Ashoka. Now, Hi. when you hear the concept of socially responsible investing, people tend to think funds that avoid investing in cigarette companies or things of that like. But what you're doing is very, very different. Can you explain? The difference between an entrepreneur and a normal retail outlet is that sort of a difference. So you give people fish, that's good. Help them to learn to fish, that's a little better. But changing the fishing industry, now that's where the real leverage is. So that's where the entrepreneurs come. And you need them just as much in social as in business. Mm -hmm. Education is in electronics. So you are finding entrepreneurs in some of these obscure or poor markets and, and allowing them to create some sort of economic development in their region. And from the point of view of business, you could have ignored this five years ago, but five years from now it's going to be strategy malpractice not to realize that the two sectors are now coming together. And there are huge market opportunities that just weren't there before. The first companies that understand that are going to really break through. I'll give you an example that would be helpful. Sure. Small farmers don't get drip irrigation because it's not profitable for companies. Their cost structure is too high. They don't understand village life. In the last five or ten years, social entrepreneurs have built very large organizations serving those communities. Mm -hmm. Well, you put them, you, and we've had a business system and a social system that haven't talked to one another serving farmers for centuries. Now they are both entrepreneurial, competitive. We've closed a lot of the productivity gaps, so you can create one business system. And in Mexico, that means for an irrigation company, a pipe company, you suddenly have access to a market which is about half the agricultural land area. So you can expand the first company that figures out mm -hmm. how to do, have a joint business system, business and social, taking the strength of each. So the social groups work with the farmers, they have a lower cost structure, they benefit, they profit, but the company gets this gigantic market. So this isn't just philanthropy, this is creating new revenue generating markets by emboldening people within those communities. It's business entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs coming together to change the industry. So can I as a everyday investor do this? If you're smart enough to invest in companies that have figured out how to do this, yes. Well, who are they? How do you find them? Um, to, to a significant degree right now, the companies are finding us as they are beginning to understand how important this is. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether it's health or drip irrigation or housing, you know, we've had a whole series of uh, Coal Ceramica, which is the largest tile company in, in Colombia, other companies, they've come together and we're opening up the market. Mm -hmm. So one out of every eight families in Columbia, because of all the displacement, really don't have minimum homes. It's a huge market that isn't connecting. And you're doing work there with a company called Semex, is that right, in terms of uh, developing low-cost tiles so people can renovate their homes, live in a better house? Well, we're working with Semex in Mexico. It's a whole group of building product companies okay. in Colombia and the Andean region. And yes, it, it opens up for the companies a very huge market. Mm -hmm. um, it opens up for the people in those slums the ability to actually rebuild their home, their business. Mm -hmm. uh, it opens up a huge new market for the financial institutions. You're helping to finance mortgages for slum dwellers to, to buy homes. Well, we have to help the finance industry figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is a, it's a partnership between people who have a lower cost structure, who understand that market, who will do the retail part of making the loans. Then you have a huge market. It's a very good market that you couldn't reach before. Now, it's interesting to see microfinance, one aspect of investing in social entrepreneurs, had risen to fame you know, with Muhammad Yunus, who won the Nobel Peace Prize. 
When you open the paper today, you'll read about SKS Microfinance, a company in India, a microfinance institution that may be uh, issuing uh, an initial public offering. I mean, the microfinance industry really seems to have skyrocketed in the past few years. What part of your story is in that space? That's a good example of one of the first areas that business is now aware of. Mm -hmm. If you're at any of the major banks, you know that microcredit is a product you've got to have. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, it wasn't there. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mohammed Yunus works with us very closely. He's very focused on these new social businesses where you take the strength of both sides. So he's built the largest telephone company in Bangladesh um, in just a matter of a few years. And, and the key is that it's poor women in the village who take a loan to buy a cell phone, and then the cell phone, they timeshare mm -hmm. it. Well, all of a sudden, he has a much bigger phone system with a completely different cost structure. Than and the corporation the has a new consumer brought into the mainstream. Well, we're going to continue to follow this story. Thank you so much, Bill Drayton, for coming into the, into the studio.